Welcome to another edition of Toolbox Tuesday. Today, I wanna to take a look at ohm readings that we would get on a compressor. You might ask yourself, why do we need to know that? There's a lot of situations that you could run into where you have to ohm out a compressor or figure out what your common start and run is on your compressor. And so one of the things that I like to do is even you know, technicians that have been in the field for a long time and this is something that they do and they really have it, um, drawing this out on, on a sheet of paper or, or something as a reference point is always just a good practice to make sure that you don't miss anything, right? So we have a common, a start, and a run, right? And so one of the things that we have to do is make sure when we're taking our reading, there's gonna be three points on your compressor um, that actually, three little pins on, this, on the compressor, when you pull the top off, somewhere there, there's common start and run. But let's say you didn't know that. All right, so at the common part, I'm gonna have our little thermal overload switch here. And I just draw these this way for, for my understanding. And then we're gonna have our windings that go to each of our, our deals there. So now, if let's just say from common to start, we take a measurement and let's say we get, I don't know, three. And then from start to run, we had five. And these are gonna be ohms. And then of course, from common to run, we would have. So one of the ways that we can kind of tell that everything's working is because our common to run two plus our common to start three should equal or be very close to our start to run winding. So that's kind of one way that we could tell. They don't always work out exact, but they'll be very, very close, right? Now, one of the things that we're doing when we're testing from these points are, are we, can we make a complete path, right? So that's gonna tell us whether or not we can get from point A to point B, or in this case, C to R. And all we're looking for is if that path is broken in any way. If that path is broken, we'll see some different things on our meter. For example, if we went from common, let's say we had a break right here, and there's an issue in that particular winding and that start winding, right? Well, when we look on our meter, when we measure between those two points, once we find out what they are, we would have an OL, right? When we measure from common to run, well, of course, we would get an ohm reading. In that case, it would still be two. So we're okay right there. And then if we tried to read from start to run, of course, we would see and open an OL there because we can't go all the way over, let's say these all touched, right? We can't go all the way over and make it to start without, without th that little break causes us not to be able to make a complete path that way. So when we get these two readings at these two points, I know that I have an open start winding. Very, very simple and we can do that for any of them, right? So the same thing would apply to our run side. You know, if we had a break on the run side over there, it would be the same thing. One of the other things, check this out. Well, what if we did this? Let's say we had a thermal overload. That symbol would be our thermal overload there. What if, let's say that was, well, could we make it from common to start? Nope, because we got a break. So we would see what here? Oh, well. Could we go from common to run? Well, no, because we got a break right there. So on this side, we would see oh, well. but Watch this, we could get a reading because we can make it all the way from start over to run and so we would have a reading there. So when we look at our meter, if we draw that out and we have those two deals, they're both pointing up to an open thermal overload. So that's a couple, that's one way that you can diagnose what exactly is going on with your compressor. And so when we're filling out our diagnostic reports or we're talking to the homeowner about some of the issues we're having, we don't have to be generic and just say your compressor is bad. We can actually tell exactly what's wrong. You have an open run winding or an open start running or an open thermal overload. We can even go so far as to talk about shorts and grounds and different things like that. 
The main thing is we can be really specific and pinpoint exactly what's wrong with our compressor when we do our diagnostic this way. And drawing it out just kind of helps you see the whole, the whole thing. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of Toolbox Tuesday. We'll see you next time. Hey, we absolutely love our HVAC community. We want you to continue to tune in. We want you to continue to, to leave us your, your comments. Um, make sure you click below to subscribe. We definitely want to hear from you and we'll see you next time.